Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about lids. I've got a dozen jars here that I made yesterday and uh, we're going to make lids for those today. It's going to be mainly one style of a lid uh, that I call kind of like an in and over lid which means the you throw the lid upside down and you throw it so that it has a foot basically that goes inside the rim and then the top outer edge of the rim of uh, the lid goes over the rim of the jar and uh, so those you have to throw upside down take, come back the next day flip them over trim them and put a knob on them so that's what we're gonna do with these jars here and uh, we're like I said, we're gonna make that one style of lid but I'm gonna make some of them a little bit different based on the shape of the jar uh, but uh, so we're gonna talk about the ins and outs of those lids today so uh, let's get to it all right for these lids I have a pound of clay each which is probably a little bit more than I need but uh, for making a lid like this that we're gonna uh, throw and then turn over and trim I'd rather have more clay than less because you can always reclaim the trimmings uh, and if you ever make one that doesn't have enough your lid won't look good or you'll th or you'll trim it too thin and then you have a mess so uh, what we're gonna do is uh, uh, the first tip that I that I have for you is that uh, all of these jars that I made no matter what shape they were I made the first one and I set my calipers to that first one and so that I made the rest of them to fit the exact same size lid so now that I've got a dozen lids to make they're all going to be the, exactly the same size they won't end up looking the same based on how I throw them here and then how I trim them and put knobs on them but just to make it easier for myself that I don't have to throw 12 different size lids I, uh, when I made the first one, I set my calipers to that, and then I'm gonna I threw the rest of them, and each one I measured inside with that uh, uh, guide right there. And now that as I throw them, I'm gonna flip this around, and as I throw the foot on them, you'll see I'll gauge that foot uh, with the with the uh, um, outside parameters of that uh, caliper right there. And so that way I can just make a dozen. I'm actually probably gonna make 14 or 16 lids just to make sure that I've got extras, and they're all gonna vary just slightly. So uh, that way I can throw them all and then I can see which ones fit best, which ones look best and I'll have a couple extras in case some don't fit. So nobody's perfect <laughs> even after 25 years. Uh, we all make mistakes and never know I might lose one along the way too. So, uh, But here we go. We're going to make the first one and kind of show you guys how we go about doing this. Now this another thing you could do with these, you could throw these off of a big hump as well. Uh, I just kind of like having the uh, individual um, uh, clay balls to make them this way so I kind of open it up like I would a, like I would a bowl uh, and then I, I just leave a whole lot of clay up here where I want to uh, make this uh, where I want to separate this clay out to make the foot and the outer ring there so I'm gonna got to get that there and I kind of got an idea here so there what I'm gonna do now that I've got kind of a thickness up here that I can separate and I've got an idea where that foot where that foot's gonna be I just take my uh, wooden rib here and I come just inside there where I want that foot to be and I just push down and separate that clay out now I've got the foot sticking up above here I've kind of gauged that again that's a little bit big so next one I think I'm gonna need to make that inside a little bit smaller so that I don't have that happen but now I've got that. That would be a, a snug fit there. All right. And now what I'm going to do is take the thickness that's right here, and I'm actually going to kind of thin that out and pull it out to make a wider rim on this. And there we go. That's about all we have to it. The rest of it's going to be done tomorrow when we come back and cut these off and turn them over and trim them. All right, guys, here we are. It is the next day after throwing these lids, and I've got them uh, ready to take off the bat. And what I did last night is I actually didn't have the heat on in my workshop, and it was a little cooler night, so I didn't cover them because I, they were pretty wet. I threw them really late last night. And so uh, now uh, this morning what I did is I actually ran a wire under all of the uh, lids, because I figured by the time I got back to them, they might be a little too stiff to do that. Uh, and then, uh, actually, I lightly covered them this morning before uh, I had to go do something else. So uh, they wouldn't get too dry. And then, uh, so now what I'm going to do is basically just lift them all off the bats and uh, flip them over. So then we can uh, trim them and put the knobs on. So uh, just wanted to give you guys an update on, on uh, where we are in the process. 
and uh, how I handle these. So now you'll see, um, basically I'm going to take these, uh, like I said, and just flip them over so that they're ready to, uh, ready to trim. Before we trim the lids, I'm going to show you something I do that I think really helps this process immensely. Um, because when I first started making lids of this style, I would, I would trim the lid and then take a little ball of clay and put it on top and then center that ball of clay on top to make the knob. And, and I just found that process really difficult because sometimes that the, if the lid was too soft, you would end up caving in the top of the lid and if it was too dry it would crack all kinds of issues and just kind of something I, I took from kind of my idea of piecing pots together when they're wet I thought you know what why don't I throw little bitty cylinders and and set those aside and then when I'm trimming the, the, the lids after I finish trimming them before I take them off the wheel because then if they're too wet you have to take them off the wheel let those stiffen up put them back on the wheel and then put the knobs on and all that process I just said, you know what, I'm going to throw these little bitty cylinders and, uh, and set those aside and then when I'm trimming the lids, I'm going to pick one of those cylinders up at a time, put it down on there and I've already got a, a cylinder thrown, I just attach it to the lid and, uh, and make my knobs out of that. So that's what I'm going to do here, I'm going to throw those off of a hump. So I've got about two and a half pounds of clay right here that I'm actually going to uh, center and throw those little cylinders off of. I, don't, I have no idea how much it's going to take, it, it's definitely not going to take two and a half pounds. Uh, but I actually had these clay balls cut uh, for some pictures I made yesterday, and this was an extra one. So all I'm going to do is just open up the top of the clay ball a little bit, or open up the top of this... Uh, clay here a little bit and then uh, make a little cylinder. I don't mind if it's a little bit thick. I just don't, the, the problem you may run into is if you if you make them a little bit too small then you're gonna, not going to have enough clay for your knobs. So you might want to have them a little bit bigger than a little bit too small. So that's all I do is just uh, kind of throw it and then I kind of use my screwdriver that I use to take off my bats and I just kind of push it in until it cuts them off and then hold it on my finger. And I'm just going to put it on this, uh, put it on this bat over here that I've got set aside. So I'm just throwing little bitty cylinders, cutting those off and setting them aside. And I'll probably throw some extras. Uh, I've got 16 lids. I've only got uh, 12 actual jars that I've got for lids. Uh, uh, 12 jars that need lids uh, and I've got 16 lids of course having extra lids is always a good thing I found out that uh, for me working with these plastic bats when I go to trim lids is, is really beneficial um, and here's here's the steps of how I do it I basically take the lid after it's leather hard you know I want it to be a little bit softer this one might be a little bit stiff out here but if it's too soft it's really hard to trim lids uh, but I definitely want to make sure that this part is, 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 is fairly stiff so that uh, you can pick it up and mess with it without distorting the, uh, the, the lid or the rim here so what I do is I take a little bit of water and I put it right on that rim because that's what's going to touch the bat because I want to set that down and then I want it to get it to seal. So I'm kind of pushing it back and forth, kind of drying, drying that water off, uh, making it stick to the bat. That's one of the reasons I use the plastic bat. All I'm doing now is, is trying to get this uh, lid recentered on the wheel. Uh, 
I usually tap it a couple good times. Now that it's pretty good and stuck to the, the bat, it'll stay there because of the, the air that's trapped in there and, the, and I wet the clay, so it's creating a suction underneath that lid to kind of keep it, uh, keep it where it is while I trim on it. So, of course, trimming the lid, there's, there's many different ways, all different kinds of tools. What I'm using is one of these right here that's a double-ended, but I'm just going to use the square end. Um, you probably noticed I don't use a, a, a large amount of tools when I'm doing anything that I do. I try to kind of keep it down to a minimum of how many tools I use. But I got, a, I got a general shape that I'm going for with most of my lids. I want it basically rounded in this section and then a little bit of a, uh, a lip here uh, for the outside of the... Whoop, dropping my tool. A little bit of a lip there for the outside of the lid. You can see how, how well stuck that lid is that I'm pushing in and carving all this away and it's not slipping or moving. Now, that doesn't mean that it won't slip. I've had lids that have flown off the wheel while I'm doing this. Just means it didn't get stuck very well. But if you if you do, if you get the if you get the lid at the right consistency, the right dryness, and you get it uh, stuck down to the bat really well, you'll have a lot of success doing uh, trimming your lids this way. All right, so there's basically my shape that I wanted for the lid. Now what I'm going to do is take one of these, uh, uh, I'm going to take a needle tool and draw a line for a circle as far as the, the center of that, the top of that lid. And then I'm going to take one of my little bitty cylinders that I made earlier. I'm going to get a little bit of water and just add it right here to the bottom. I don't want to get it really wet, but I want to get a little bit of water there. And then I'm going to try to center that somewhere around that ring that I just made with the needle tool. Now I'm going to throw that and I'm going to start out by getting water on the top and just kind of pushing down on the top of it to kind of help force that down and stick to the uh, to the top of the lid. Then I'm going to kind of add a little bit more water. If you add too much water before you put this on, it'll slip and move around and it won't stick to the actual top of the lid. So now I want to use my thumbnail there or whatever, use a tool, kind of smooth that out. Now that it's stuck really well, now I can actually shape this and form it. Good thing is, is that lid centered. So even if I get this a little bit off center, it's such a small amount of clay that you can kind of manipulate it and get it back on center. make whatever shape knob that you prefer I just kind of have a general idea but I don't I'm not too stuck on one idea I might if I'm making a jar a certain shape I might try to make a certain style knob but for the most part I just kind of make whatever whatever I feel like as far as a knob and the other reason I use these plastic bats is this right here once I'm done throwing that it's still stuck to this and unless I want to use a new bat every time I can pick this up and because these plastic bats are flexible I can kind of bend it this way turn it and then bend it again and I just felt it release now I can pick that lid up and move it and start over with the next one so there we go now we got a, a trimmed lid now I'll come back tomorrow and I'll actually uh, put a hole up through because this uh, is holding air inside of that knob I'll come back and drill a hole through the bottom uh, to make sure that that air hasn't escaped Well, that wraps it up. I got all the lids made for all the jars. I got them all trimmed. I got all the holes drilled in them so the air can escape from the knobs. And I got them matched up with the jars based on the size and shape of the jar. And uh, so I hope this helps you. I hope it inspires you. And if it did, go out and make some amazing pots. Don't forget to subscribe before you go if you haven't done that already. And uh, if you really enjoyed this and you got something out of it, hit the thumbs up button. And we'll see you in the next video. Oh,